Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Caitlin, your geeky girlfriend, and today's video is going to be another Real Talk movie review. I have so many movies to review and leave here in the channel for you guys. This one was a big summer blockbuster, so I'm really excited to review it for you. Um, and before we get into today's video, always know that there are some minor spoilers ahead, including images from the film that I received off of our beautiful internet and um make sure you hit that red button and subscribe let me know in the comments what movie you want me to review next i have tons more reviews coming of older movies newer movies i'm going to the movies next weekend to see some brand new releases i'm looking at you barbie so those will be coming very shortly but today we're going to talk about fast x or fast 10 fast and furious 10 however you want to say it um and my husband and i went opening weekend to see this film. He has been a big Fast and Furious fan for a long time. He really, really, really enjoys the first film. Um, and I've recently rewatched number four, five, six, and seven because I had never seen them. So those reviews are coming also. So check back for those. If you have not seen any of the other Fast and Furious movies, but were intrigued by the last one, which is not actually the last one, there's going to be a second part. Um, to it and the ending of this one. So this is really Fast X part one. I'm not sure what they're going to call the finale, maybe fast the finale or fast finale or the final chapter or something. But this one, um, you don't really, I would say you do and you don't have to watch the other ones to see it. Obviously, if you know anything about Fast and Furious, you know that Vin Diesel's the main character and you probably know that he plays Dominic Toretto. I mean, we're going to talk about in just a second some of the cameos that are in this movie that you would have to know. I would say maybe watch number five because of the like the opening of 10 and the closing of five are the same. So if you watch number five, um, then it would be helpful. But my husband and I were kind of discussing that you don't really have to know any of these characters to watch this movie and understand, which is kind of one of the problems that we had with it. So let's let's talk about it. So here are some shots from the film. Um, like I said, Vin Diesel plays Dominic Toretto. If you know anything about Fast and Furious, you know this piece of information. You probably also know that Paul Walker was... Um, known for this franchise as well, even though Paul Walker did some earlier movies in his career, but the Fast and Furious series really made him who we know him as today. And unfortunately, Paul Walker um, passed away during the filming and production of Fast and Furious 7, which we'll talk about in another video. But, um, so you probably know that bit of information. You may or may not know that other people like Dwayne The Rock Johnson and John Cena and um, Charlize Theron are also part of this franchise. But in this movie, we also got um, Brie Larson and Alan Richardson. Um, and along with all of our other, you know, Fast and Furious troop members like Ludacris and um, Tyrese Gibson and... Um, the girl who plays Mia, her name is evading me. But um, anyway, so you get the normal troop, um, including John Cena. John Cena, this is a minor spoiler. John Cena is revealed to be Vin Diesel's brother in Fast and Furious number nine. Um, and so he makes his first appearance in Fast and Furious number nine and then has come back for number 10. Now, due to conflicts between the cast members, Dwayne The Rock Johnson actually is not in Fast 10, but he does have a cameo. I won't reveal where, where it is, but it is alluded that he will be coming back for the finale. Um, Jason Statham is also in these films. He has a cameo as well. Um, so there's just a lot of people in these movies, a lot of big name stars, and quite frankly, a lot of testosterone. These are testosterone based movies. We've got cars, we've got women and action. And every single Fast and Furious movie that you watch always has a street race. That's what makes them Fast and Furious movies. And all of those scenes do have scantily clad women. So if you get offended by that, probably not a movie for you to watch. Um, like I said, I did catch up on all of the Fast and Furious movies before I went and watched this one because I wanted to make sure that I did know all of the pieces. Um, and then lastly, we also add Jason Momoa into the cast of Fast 10 as well. And let's talk about the pros and cons because 
you can see it right there. He was a con for me. So first we're going to talk about the pros. I am going to list some positives. So if you like fast cars and crazy stunts, the Fast and Furious movies are your bread and butter. Um, my brother and I have talked about the fact that movies like Fast and Furious really help keep people going to the movie theaters. Whether they're good movies or not, the theaters are usually pretty full with movies of movies like moviegoers watching these big name box office buster action movies. Um, like I mentioned in the previous slide, there are some classic character cameos. Dwayne The Rock Johnson returns for a cameo. Jason Statham returns for a cameo. Helen Mirren returns for a cameo. John Cena returns for his role. He's not a cameo. He actually has a role in the film. Jason Statham does as well. He has a role in the series and has more than just a cameo. Even characters like Han, spoilers, are back in this rendition and other characters that we literally thought were dead I won't give them well Han is one of them if you watched any of the Fast and Furious movies especially number five or six you think that Han is dead well I've got a spoiler for you Han's not dead he's back and another character as well there are also random celebrity cameos in this movie like Pete Davison and like random people who really have no business sorry to be in a Fast and Furious movie like it's just so random they really pulled out all the stops to get so many celebrities in this movie, but my favorite part of this whole movie was John Cena. And that might sound silly, but he, his role was so endearing and it was so touching. And, um, his role, like I said, he is Dom's brother and, um, he is in charge of watching over Dom's son, which we're going to talk about that in a second. That's like a weird storyline in and of itself, but another story. Like, and that's something that I'll talk more in depth about in the other reviews for the rest of the movies in this series, because Dom has a son that's not Letty's, even though they're married and they go through all this drama together in all the other movies. Um, but anyway, John Cena, so then his, the son's uncle, and he is in charge of watching over little B or Brian, um, which is a touching tribute to Paul Walker, whose character's name was Brian. So I like that Dom's, I like that I'm fine with the fact that Dom had a son and named him Brian. That's not the issue I have. The issue I have is like how he was conceived in the first place is just so mind boggling. It doesn't even make any sense, but welcome to the Fast and Furious franchise, everybody. Anyway, John Cena is such an endearing character and he really really plays his role well and unfortunately I won't give away what happens but this probably will be the last time that we see John Cena in the Fast and Furious franchise and that really makes me sad because he kind of came in so randomly and so out of the blue and you grow to like him and then now he's probably not going to be in anymore but who knows they might resurrect him just like they resurrected all these other people so it'll be up for grabs now, so there were some pros. However, the majority of this movie was filled with cons. First of all, we're gonna I'm gonna save the number one for last because I could go on for 30 minutes about how much I did not like Jason Momoa in this movie. So we're gonna talk about the other ones first. So many plot holes become very evident. For example, Dominic's kid. They the actor, the child actor that they chose to play little B is um like biracial, mixed racial fine, but it doesn't line up with the storyline of Fast and Furious and how he, like I said, how he was conceived and who his mother was or is and Dominic himself. Like it just doesn't make sense. It looks as if like little B looks as if he would be Dom and Letty's kid, but the storyline doesn't, doesn't tell that story. The storyline of these movies leading up to this tells a different story. So I wasn't really too sure. Like that just made it confusing for a lot of people. Um, this whole movie seemed very random, very haphazard, like the cameos that were in it, the celebrities that were in it. Like it just, there was like a random feud between Ludacris and Tyrese Gibson, which according to my husband has been built up for many movies, but it was just, it seemed random. It seemed out of place. And that brings me to Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa is like, some people, I've heard other reviews and I've watched other reviews of this movie and some people say that he like added the right amount of chaos to this movie, but these movies have a lot going on regardless. I don't think they needed that extra level of chaos, number one. Number two, he was very satirical, very like, he was supposed to be comical, but 
nor myself, myself, nor my husband thought it was funny. Um, they did a lot of, they made, in my opinion, kind of a mockery of his mental health and his mental stability. And like, this guy is very mentally unstable. He is like very sociopathic. Um, and they just kind of made it seem like a joke and like, Jason Momoa acted like it was a joke, I guess. I don't know. It was just weird. The whole delivery of it was lost on me. I did not think, like, the plot of this movie is pretty serious. And I just felt like Jason Momoa threw the whole thing off. He was very over the top, very flamboyant and like, his fashion and what he was wearing and just how he carried himself as a character. I just, I was not a fan at all. I hated every second that he was on screen. And a big big thing a big glaring thing is at the end of the movie Jason Momoa and Vin Diesel are in a car chase we have to remember people that this is a car movie this is a movie about fast cars going fast and doing furious things that is the plot of the movie and Jason Momoa can't even drive like there is a scene where Jason Momoa like goes off the road when he's trying to race Dom and it's like this doesn't make any sense this is a guy who like beat Dom in a street race earlier in the film. And then all of a sudden he doesn't know how to drive in these crazy conditions. Like what? I remember leaving the film and like leaving the movie and being like, that was such, that was such a cluster. That scene was so crazy. It didn't make any sense that this guy who apparently has all this driving experience and can drive big trucks and vans and can beat Dominic Toretto in a street race, like can't, actually drive a car to keep up with Dominic Toretto like if you're gonna go into the fight I guess know who you're going up against and it just seemed out of again seemed out of place and maybe that was the point maybe it was supposed to lead on to the fact that he didn't know who he was getting going up against but it every other villain and every other Fast and Furious movie that we've watched thus far knows how to drive or knows how to operate the vehicle at which they are operating in whether it be a plane a tank a submarine they know how to work their vehicles and Jason Momoa like randomly just can't drive all of a sudden at a random point in the movie so lots of plot holes lots of like I said, very random, very haphazard things. And I think the biggest con for me and what makes it most sad is that this is the majority of Vin Diesel's acting career has been some, like, is in this franchise. And a lot of what he does in his life is surrounded by this franchise. For example, he gave away Paul Walker's daughter at her wedding to her groom because her father had passed away. That's how close Vin Diesel and Paul Walker were in real life. And that is the type of stuff that I just live for. And I love when actors like truly have bonds, but like deeper than what's on the screen. And it's just so sad to me that this final chapter part one was so, so disappointing. My review or my score is a D minus. I would have a very hard time watching that movie again because I just was like cringing and not for good. Re- like it wasn't that it was a scary movie and I was cringing out of like suspense and thrill. It was like, I had a hard time watching it and we almost got up and left because we were so in shock of what was happening. We were laughing at things we were not supposed to be laughing at because it, it was a farce to us. And like, this is coming from this is, you know, I enjoyed most of the other movies. My husband enjoyed most of the other movies and it was just disappointing. I would have a really hard time even being motivated to go and watch the last one. However, we feel like because of how this one ended and it ended in such a place that now we know we have to go and watch the next one. And we hate that even more because if it would have ended in a different spot, we wouldn't just avoid the last one and not even worry about it. And my husband was so excited for this movie and it was such a disappointment and that made it really sad. Sad for us, sad for Vin Diesel and just sad for the franchise in general. We were discussing that Paul Walker very well may be rolling in his grave because, but I think my husband and I are on the complete opposite end of the spectrum when, with regards to this movie, I think a lot of other people really enjoyed Jason Momoa's performance and thought he really elevated the storyline. So we may just be out in left field somewhere, but I don't know. But overall, we were not fans, especially after watching Hypnotic, which we saw right before this because we did a double feature at the Fun Barn, which if you are local to Southeastern Ohio or Southern Ohio, definitely check out the Fun Barn. Movies 10, that's my little shameless plug for them because they are amazing. They have really cheap food. You can take food into the theater from their little cafe. They have pizza and subs and all kinds of stuff. You can take it into the theater with you. And they have popcorn and candy and all the rest of the good movie theater snacks. But for really cheap, like popcorn is like one, two, and three dollars. 
drinks are like $1.25. It's amazing. You can have an entire day with your family. They have a full arcade there. Um, and it's just such a fun fun experience and we that's usually like our monthly date night is we just go and we pick two movies and next week is going to be it for Oppenheimer and Barbie I'm telling you it's coming so I highly recommend movies 10 I don't highly recommend fast 10 but um after watching hypnotic which the review of that movie is on the channel um this was just a killer disappointment like it just really was like wow we just spent money to go watch that we really wish we would not have so it's very sad and I feel for Vin Diesel um, and you wonder how much of a say he had in it. And if he likes it, then fine. Then I, I guess I don't feel bad for you, but not that he's ever going to see this video, but you know, it's fine. Um, but anyway, so I feel, I feel like my husband and I are way out in left field with regards to this movie because I've seen some other reviews that said it was one of the better ones in the series. And... I have to say I highly disagree, but you can let me know nicely in the comments if you agree or disagree. Um, let me know what you want me to watch next. Like I said, I've got probably 10 or 12 more movie reviews coming over the next few days, so make sure you check out all of them. Older movies, newer movies, everything in between. You can find it right here in my Real Talk series. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.